Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Friday, the 24th of November. Let's begin with a deep breath as we make our confession to Almighty God. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Together, Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips together and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Psalm 113 appointed today. Here's a note from the Oxford Study Bible. Praise of the Divine Name. Psalm 113 is a hymn echoing in verses 6 to 9 the song of Hannah from 1 Samuel chapter 2. You may remember that Hannah sang with joy when her barrenness was lifted and she became pregnant with Samuel. Now back to the note. The psalm moves from the Lord's name to the Lord, whose incomparability is manifest in his reversal of the situation of the poor and barren, end quote. We often think of the incomparability of God as based upon God's omniscience, all-knowing nature, omnipresence through all of time, omnipotence, God's power. But we don't think to laud God in God's incomparability for how God reverses the fortunes of the poor and the barren, the lowly among us. This is truly the sight of God's compassion, mercy, and power at work among God's people. Psalm 113, praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. We magnify your name, O Lord, in all times and places. You subdue the arrogant and raise the humble. You feed the hungry and reveal the poverty of wealth. We give thanks for your salvation, made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue in our reading of 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verses 36, all the way over to 59. You remember yesterday that Judas, in command of a very zealous but small fighting force, overcame the larger army of Lysias that was bent upon their destruction. Now to the reading. Verse 36, Then Judas and his brother said, See, our enemies are crushed. Let us go up to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it. So all the army assembled and went up to Mount Zion. There they saw the sanctuary desolate, the altar profaned, and the gates burned. In the courts they saw bushes sprung up as in a thicket, 
or as on one of the mountains. They saw also the chambers of the priests in ruins. Then they tore their clothes and mourned with great lamentation. They sprinkled themselves with ashes and fell face down on the ground. And when the signal was given with the trumpets, they cried out to heaven. Then Judas detailed men to fight against those in the citadel until he had cleansed the sanctuary. He chose blameless priests devoted to the law, and they cleansed the sanctuary and removed the defiled stones to an unclean place. They deliberated what to do about the altar of burnt offering, which had been profaned, and they thought it best to tear it down, so that it would not be a lasting shame to them that the Gentiles had defiled it. So they tore down the altar and stored the stones in a convenient place on the temple hill until a prophet should come to tell them what to do with them. Then they took unhewn stones as the law directs and built a new altar like the former one. They also rebuilt the sanctuary and the interior of the temple and consecrated the courts. They made new holy vessels and brought the lampstand, the altar of incense, and the table into the temple. Then they offered incense on the altar and lit the lamps on the lampstand, and these gave light in the temple. They placed the bread on the table and hung up the curtains. Thus they finished all the work they had undertaken. Early in the morning, on the twenty-fifth day of the month, which is the month of Chislev, in the one hundred forty-eighth year, they rose and offered sacrifice, as the law directs, on the new altar of burnt offering that they had built. At the very season and on the very day that the Gentiles had profaned it, it was dedicated with songs and harps and lutes and cymbals. All the people fell on their faces and worshipped and blessed heaven, who had prospered them. So they celebrated the dedication of the altar for eight days and joyfully offered burnt offerings. They offered a sacrifice of well-being and a thanksgiving offering. They decorated the front of the temple with golden crowns and small shields. They restored the gates and the chambers for the priests and fitted them with doors. There was very great joy among the people, and the disgrace brought by the Gentiles was removed. Then Judas and his brothers and all the assembly of Israel determined that every year at that season the days of dedication of the altar should be observed with joy and gladness for eight days, beginning with the twenty-fifth day of the month of Chislev. Here ends the first reading. So here we have mention of the inauguration of the ancient tradition of Hanukkah. Hanukkah in Hebrew is dedication. So this is the festival of the dedication of the second temple. It lasts for eight days and candles are lit on each day of the festival. It usually takes place in the Gregorian calendar in the month of December, around Christmas. Revelation chapter 22, verses 6 to 13. And the angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true for the Lord. The God of the spirits of the prophets has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. See, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades the prophets and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evil doer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The book itself is not to be sealed because the events of the book the events foretold, are imminent. This is why the writer says, if you're already doing evil, don't even, don't even switch now. There's not enough time left. Or if you're holy, keep on doing holiness because there's no time left. And friends, really, we are in these days now. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of the Lord. We only have each day given to us. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it and serve the Lord in this day and in this moment. Come, Holy Spirit, and be our helper. Amen. Now, friends, let us with confidence present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. Let us pray. We pray for all those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people, most especially the most vulnerable and needy. May your reign come, O Lord, together. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. May your kingdom come together. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you have bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come together. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure. May your rule come together. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this community of faith at St. Philip's, for the communities of faith represented by all of our prayers today, that we, together attentive to your word, may always worship in spirit and in truth. May your reign come together. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. Hear us as we pray for the fulfillment of your reign. We ask through Jesus Christ, our King, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now, friends, the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the sanctifying Spirit rest upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Friday, TGIF. If you're coming to the gala tonight, we look forward to seeing you there. And those of you who cannot make it, have a wonderful weekend. Hopefully, we'll see you on Sunday in church. We will be having Hatter and uh, Zaki to speak to us for a few moments on Sunday to just tell us a bit more of Zaki's life story. God bless you, TGIF.